Cleopatra's life is a truly captivating story that fascinates us to this day. She was a powerful and influential leader who faced incredible ups and downs. She lost her kingdom, fought to get it back, almost lost it again, built an empire and then saw it all slip away. Her legacy goes beyond her time, making a lasting mark on history and culture. In this video, we will analyze the top 4 leadership lessons we can learn from Cleopatra based on the events that took place in her life. Welcome to Personality Matters, the channel where we explore how people impacted the world. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. After her father's death, Cleopatra became the Queen of Egypt, although she needed to share the throne with one of her brothers named Ptolemy. But there was one small problem. Nobody was excited about the idea of sharing anything with her. Eventually, it created a conflict that resulted in Cleopatra losing the throne and being expelled from Egypt. She was forced into exile in Syria, but she was not willing to concede power to her brother so easily. She built an army and fought her brother's forces, then she decided to seek help from Julius Caesar. Well, to make it clear, the political context was extremely complicated not only in Egypt but also in Rome. Rome was also torn apart by its own internal issues. It was involved in the war between two powerful politicians, Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great, and Egypt was on the side of Pompey. However, Julius Caesar defeated his political adversary in the Battle of Mutina. Right after the battle, Pompey was headed for Egypt, where he expected to get support from his ally Cleopatra's brother Ptolemy. However, Ptolemy didn't intend to help out his defeated partner. He knew that Pompey had lost the battle and that now Julius Caesar was in a strong position. So, Ptolemy betrayed his ally. He ordered to kill Pompey, thinking that that way he could align himself with the winner of the war and demonstrate his loyalty to Julius Caesar, but it didn't work out the way he expected. Julius Caesar arrived in Alexandria a couple of days after Pompey's murder, and he stayed in the royal palace from which Cleopatra had been previously thrown out. The thing is that killing Pompey, Egyptians robbed Caesar of the opportunity to decide his opponent's fate. Apparently, Caesar wanted to grant mercy to his adversary to portray himself as a reasonable and noble leader in the eyes of the Roman people, but now he couldn't do it and most likely he was angry with Cleopatra's brother Ptolemy. But for Cleopatra, it was a great opportunity to drive a wedge between Caesar and her brother. She decided to try her luck and convince Caesar to take her side. She secretly came back from the desert, avoiding enemy lines and Roman barricades. Then she arrived at the palace at night inside a sturdy bag. Basically, she smuggled herself into the palace. Cleopatra had a conversation with Caesar and managed to persuade him to support her in the war against her brother. Well, let's be honest, she exposed herself to a lot of risk, as this whole affair was full of uncertainty and danger, but it worked out just fine. Caesar recognized that siding with Cleopatra would enhance his influence in Egypt, so he supported her, fought against her brother's soldiers, defeated them and reinstated her as the ruler. Yes, we all know about the love affair between Caesar and Cleopatra, but there are indications that their relationship had a significant political dimension as well. Cleopatra wanted to regain the throne and Caesar wanted to establish his influence in the region. The lesson here is that she didn't give up and continued the struggle. She gathered an army, convinced a powerful leader to take her side and regained the throne. Even though Cleopatra was back in power, her position was far from being stable. She had to navigate an extremely complex political landscape, both outside and inside her country. Firstly, Egypt was under the strong influence of the Roman Empire, which meant that Cleopatra needed to act with caution to keep her position and secure Egypt's interests. Secondly, the political situation inside Egypt was also quite tense. Cleopatra needed to strike a balance between the native Egyptians and the Greek elite. The native Egyptians saw her as a divine figure and ruler, whereas the Greek elite didn't like her at first. But she couldn't simply ignore their opinion as they held a significant and privileged position in society. Plus, Cleopatra inherited a terrible financial state from her predecessors. Also, she needed to command the army and navy. To put it simply, she had to navigate through a lot of uncertainty, as she could be at any time removed from power by Rome, betrayed by her own elites and fall out of favor with her citizens. But despite all the challenges, she managed to stay in power for more than 20 years and govern her country relatively well. Her reign in Egypt was marked with stability and prosperity. 
As mentioned earlier, Cleopatra ruled Egypt when the Roman Empire was gaining more and more power, thus she needed to keep a stable relationship with her formidable neighbor. Cleopatra's involvement in Roman politics was not limited to Caesar. After Caesar was killed, she joined forces with Mark Antony, a powerful Roman leader. We know that these two also had a passionate love affair, but their initial motivation to forge a partnership was conditioned by political reasons. That's exactly why they held a meeting for the first time in Taurus. Mark Antony planned to rely on Cleopatra as an ally during the invasion against the Pathian Empire. For Cleopatra, it was necessary to safeguard Egypt's interest and keep its autonomy from Rome. By the way, at that time, Rome was still divided by the turbulent power struggles. After Caesar's death, civil wars in Rome continued continued. The conflict flared up between Mark Antony, Caesar's protégé, and Octavian, Caesar's adopted son. At one point they concluded peace, but it didn't last long. Octavian declared war on Cleopatra, and of course, Mark Antony couldn't leave Cleopatra alone. At that time, she was not only his strategic ally, but also the mother of his three children. Eventually, the two sides got in the Battle of Actium, which ended up with Octavian's victory. Cleopatra and Antony's army retreated to Alexandria. After the negotiation, Antony's troops went to Octavian. Mark Antony was defeated, but Cleopatra managed to stay in power for one more year till the Octavian army got back to take control over Egypt. Octavian was determined to capture Cleopatra and parade her through the streets of Rome as a symbol of his victory over Egypt. Apparently, anticipating what humiliation was prepared for her, she committed suicide. Cleopatra's death is often regarded as an honorable act due to the circumstances. It is believed that she took her own life using an Egyptian cobra, a symbol associated with royalty and divine protection in ancient Egypt. This act is seen as a dignified choice to maintain her sovereignty and avoid the potential disgrace of being paraded in Rome as a captive. Octavian, despite his victory, couldn't help admiring Cleopatra's strength and resilience in the face of defeat. Basically, she showed him that she was in control of her fate and only she could decide it. Cleopatra's death marked the end of Egypt's autonomy, eventually it became a province of the Roman Empire. Despite her sad ending, Cleopatra is remembered as a leader who made a lasting impact on the world. Cleopatra's story stands as a proof of her remarkable leadership qualities and continues to be a source of inspiration. Let us know what you think about the video in the comments. Thank you for watching Personality Matters. We talk about people who made the world. Until next time, I am Arthur Kams.